Yamaha presents The Whitetail Diaries, chronicling hunting adventures of the most plentiful and intelligent big game animal in North America. Join top whitetail hunters nationwide. Embark on the amazing adventure that is hunting the whitetail deer. This week on Yamaha Whitetail Diaries, Ted Gartner from Garmin has come to deer camp to see if he can take down his first white-tailed deer with a bow. Well, it's uh, one of my yearly pilgrimages to uh, deer camp uh, down near Brackettville, Texas. Uh, come down here at least a couple times a year and uh, see Wade and the rest of the guys. Um, this is something I always look forward to every year. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's just fun to be down here. Uh, neat country, uh, great folks to be with, fantastic food. Uh, you always wind up going away about five pounds heavier than when you came here. You know, I've hunted deer down here with Wade for many, many years and, and uh, have always enjoyed it, but this year is gonna be my first time out down here uh, with a bow. Uh, I have never uh, deer hunted with a bow before. Not sure why, um, it was something that I really, I wasn't familiar with, I didn't grow up with bow hunting. Um, so it wasn't something that I was just, I guess, naturally predisposed to get into. That changed about three years ago when my son Jack decided that he wanted to start bow hunting. I thought it'd be, you know, great for him to do. So we got him set up with a bow, and he came down here, uh, uh, you know, last year and uh, shot a really nice deer with a bow. And, and about that time, I thought, well, gosh, what? why am I sitting on the sidelines here? Why shouldn't I get in and, and be a part of it? So immediately shooting my bow, making sure everything's still sighted in. Um, that's always a little bit nerve wracking because you're shooting in front of all these pros here. And, and uh, thankfully I was dialed in, really pleased with that. You know, Ted's a, a pretty avid, pretty serious you know, hunter. He, he travels around the United States, uh, both upland game bird hunting as, as well as hunting whitetail. And uh, he's, he's been a frequent visitor of ours down here and you know, has hunted with a lot of different means and methods. And he really had taken to bow hunting uh, and picked up one of the Cabela's bows and was shooting it a lot. And, and obviously was pretty dialed in once he, he got here to the, to the camp because when you watch him shooting around here, I mean, he was flinging those arrows right where it needed to be. So now it's just a matter of uh, picking the right stand with the conditions and getting him out in the field. get in my camo, and Jeff and I go off to our first uh, stand that evening. Uh, we were kind of down in a, uh, in a, in a ground blind, um, and uh, you know, we didn't see a whole heck of a lot. Saw a few nice deer come in. Uh, there were probably three or four, uh, probably four-year-old deer that were, were nice deer, but um, I really had decided that I wanted to shoot a, a, a mature deer, uh, you know, and I was going to let any of the smaller ones just kind of pass. I, I'd rather shoot the, the mature ones. So, saw some nice deer, but they weren't exactly what I was looking for. It was nice to just kind of immediately get your routine and get into things and, and Jeff and I called in a night that evening and, and we're excited to get out the next morning. When the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries returns, Ted draws back on the buck that he's been looking for. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you in part by Yamaha ATVs and side-by-sides, real world tough. Cabela's, it's in your nature. Garmin Verb, life, camera, action. Introducing the newest member of the Yamaha off-road family. It thrives in the most remote, rugged terrain. It never steps down from a challenge and travels long distances in search of adventure. The all new Yamaha Wolverine. It's a whole new animal. Get 
Comfortable to carry, comfortable to shoot. It's slim, concealable, and powerful protection. The M&P Shield by Smith & Wesson. Confidence? We perfected that years ago. The Alaskan Series Cooler Packs by Arctic Ice. Specifically designed to keep your food and drinks cold all day long without having to use ice and end up with a soggy lunch. The Alaskan Series by Arctic Ice. Bitterly cold. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. Now, after passing on some deer in his first night at camp, Ted Gartner from Garmin is bow hunting early in the morning looking for a mature whitetail that Wade has captured on his scouting cameras. Got up the next morning, and uh, Jeff and I got into our stand, and almost immediately, I mean within a couple of minutes, um, we started hearing things. Uh, kind of some traffic down in the creek bed, but it was all too dark. We couldn't see anything, but we knew there was activity going on. You know, the deer come from all different directions on this particular stand, so, you know, when you're hunting it, you got to be pretty uh, pretty on the spot, got to be, you know, pretty much looking for anything, but the one challenge with this particular stand, uh, it's going to get light very, very, very late because the canopy of trees that's, that's around it, I mean, it's almost like hunting under an umbrella. And uh, Wade kind of talked me through it, you know, where the shooting lanes were, what I needed to do. Uh, kind of some of the deer that he had been seeing on, on trail cameras. Um, sounded like some really nice deer, and, and uh, one that, that kind of caught my attention was this, this eight point, and Wade kind of said, you know, this deer, he's a mature deer, his, 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 his horns just kind of keep going up and up and up, and uh, that sounded pretty good to me, so. Wade the night before told me to go ahead and stand up and, and kind of get in position uh, before the light really got good so that I wouldn't have to do that uh, when there were when there were big deer under me. So I did that and, and all of a sudden the, the world kind of woke up around me. Uh, a lot of deer started milling around, um, you know, all shapes and sizes and then before long uh, this big deer came out, this big eight-point deer. Um, and he was, uh, he was everything Wade had said and more. Um, and immediately my heart rate started amping up. So as it started getting light, I started seeing this buck a little bit better and, and I knew he was, he was the buck I wanted. There was no question about it. Uh, but the trouble was, is it was much too dark for me to shoot and even darker uh, for Jeff to get any photography of this deer. So. We waited and we waited, and that only increased my anticipation and my heart rate. It, it, it just, uh, it was such a tense time, an exciting time. Uh, I was shaking, you know, breathing heavy. Uh, it, was, it was pretty exciting. I remember about a half dozen times where I would turn back to Jeff and just kind of with a look in my eye, can I shoot yet? Is it light enough? 
every time he, he shook his head no. Um, and that was excruciating. I, I knew it was, it was in my head, I knew it was too dark to shoot, but in my heart, I wanted to, to draw back on that deer right away. Um, so I, I finally looked back and, and uh, Jeff gave me the okay and, and that's all I needed. He gave me the okay, the deer started walking from left to right in front of me. I drew back and I knew I wasn't going to be able to hold draw very steadily for very long. Uh, so I drew back, I put the pin where I wanted to and I let go. Um, the, the, the feeling that I felt after that was just uh, elation. Um, I knew I had had a pretty good shot, thought it might be a little far back, but I was, I was pretty proud of my shot and, and uh, it was a fast one, I know that much. Um, but Jeff and I kind of did the whole, the whole high five thing and, and uh, you know, we waited for a while and, and uh, got down from our stands and, and Wade's rule is uh, you got to wait at least two hours before you track a deer uh, that's been hit by an arrow. So we went back to camp and uh, kind of talk things over then. Well, uh, we're down here at the scene of the crime, so to speak, and uh, we've got the search party assembled and, and we're gonna go try to find this deer. We went back, had a breakfast taco, and uh, analyzed the tape. We think we've got a decent hit. Um, it's just a matter of tracking the deer down. Jeff and I saw some blood, um, but didn't push the deer. Uh, so now we're going to go try to find him, see what happens. You know, this is always a fun time for a bow hunter, when you, or any hunter really, when you take him a shot. and you, you know you made a pretty good shot, but you want to find blood, you want to find sign, you want to find the arrow and, and get a, a good uh, feeling about the trail. But we're giving this deer about a little over two hours now, and that's kind of our rule of thumb. Uh, even if we know we made a perfect shot, we like to give them two hours and then we deduct and figure it out from there. So we'll get on the track and see what we can't find. We got some blood. A little bit more than the first some down here. Yeah, all it's over that. Pretty good. Makes you feel a little better. Yeah, he probably stopped right in here. You can see all the blood where he, you know, kind of stood. I mean, hopefully he's gonna start staggering now, but that's that's a lot of blood loss right there. You know, I mean, that's look at that right there. I mean, that's a, that's a steady pool of blood right there. We were not able to find this deer uh, that evening, and uh, went back to the to, to deer camp, and, and I was I was not in a real good place. And you know what? Nobody at camp was. Uh, it's one of those things where uh, it's it's just tough, and everybody at deer camp understands what what that is to lose a deer, and it's a sickening feeling. I went to bed that night, and and uh, I spent a lot of hours tossing and turning. It was it was not a fun night to be me. Up next, the local Air Force tracks down Ted's deer when the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries returns. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you in part by Smith & Wesson, made in the USA since 1852. Food Saver, the number one vacuum sealing system. Arctic Ice, bitterly cold. Experience Sight Viz, a brighter sight better than standard sights, giving you an immediate, more successful shooting performance. High Viz lets you see a dramatic contrast between the target and the barrel for a more intuitive aim that delivers instant results. Our light pipes come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colors, designed to be seen in a variety of conditions. With our broad line of sights, you'll see your marksmanship dramatically improve, bringing more fun and confidence into every shooting experience. Shoot more accurately. Enjoy the sport. Choose High Viz.
heavy duty, rugged, and designed for the big game hunter and angler. The Food Saver Game Saver Titanium Vacuum Sealer has the power and performance to seal in the freshness of your game and fish for up to three years, five times longer than standard storage methods. And with its extra wide dual and repetitive sealing capabilities, that's a ton of big game savings. Tough tested and rated 4.8 out of five stars by outdoorsmen just like you. The Food Saver Titanium System, it's a true game changer. When I'm not hunting, I'm thinking about hunting. It's on my mind because it's in my blood. When the hunt calls, my TC Venture points the way. Accurate. Reliable, proven. Until there's no more ground to cover and no more stories to tell. When you're a TC Venture hunter, the hunt never ends. My secret weapon? Evercom. It's the first ever calming scent. It's real smells from bedding areas. To deer, that means safety. Evercom reassures even nervous deer. Which can help you get the shot. I use Evercom all season long. Put it on your boots, your pants, and your decoy. It's stick form, won't wash away or freeze. Evercom. 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 From the family deer farm at Conquest Sense. Stealth Cam. Trail cameras with features you demand. With the durability and performance you can count on. Built to withstand even the harshest conditions. Stealth Cam. Join the Trail Cam Revolution. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. Well, the next morning, to boost morale, Wade let Ted go out on an awdad hunt to lift his spirits. But as Ted and Jeff were headed to the stand, the local Air Force, I mean, uh, buzzards, found Ted's deer for him. So Ted decided to have a little fun with Wade. All right, well, we came out here to look for this buck, and we got him loaded into the truck. Uh, but Wade said, you know what, why don't you go out if you don't you know, see anything? Why don't you, you know, maybe shoot an odd ad or a cold buck or something like that? You know, just to kind of lift my spirits, and I needed it. Um, at deer camp, you know, when, when one guy doesn't find his deer, it, it pains everybody. So. Um, you know, that's kind of a cool thing about deer camp. Another thing about deer camp is we kind of like to play jokes on one another. So we're going to shut this up, spin a tall tail, and uh, tell Wade to help us pull this uh, Audad out of the back of the truck and we'll see what his reaction is. It's always a good sign when a truck pulls up to the back of the swing set. That usually means that something's been harvested. Now we got to go probably clean and where he's hunting, there's no telling. What we do, Ted? You got an odd head down, man. <laughs> it didn't take long. No, it didn't. I mean, you, we just sat down in that blind and they just started coming in. It was weird though. I mean, they came in from the left right. and uh, about 20 yards out, it was it was almost a replay of the shot that I had on that deer. <laughs> I thought, oh no, here we go, here we go again. And, and uh, hit him, went less than 100 yards, oh, sweet. boom. Uh, not the hugest guy in the world, yeah. not you know, but I'm I'm proud of him. Man. Our dads are awesome. I don't care how big they I'm are, excited. they make a great mount. Yeah, let's take a look Get at him it. out. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> we got him! Wow, it. where'd you find him? The buzzards found him. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, he's a little light in the back. When I dropped that tailgate, I was just stunned. I mean, I didn't even know what to say there, but you know, it, it's, once again, it proves to you that, you know, a buzzard, a buzzard may be the ugliest thing you see on the side of the road. It might eat raccoons and possums and everything sitting on there, but I'm gonna tell you right now, to a deer hunter, that's a Victoria's Secrets model. I mean, when you see one flying around where you've been hunting at and you've lost a deer and he's going to the ground and you go there and he's there, he's the prettiest thing around.
Not only did the buzzards help him find his deer, but Ted also had a handy tool with him when he was tracking. Okay, so what we've done here is we've taken the track log from our Garmin, track log and waypoints, uh, plugged it into our computer, and we're showing all that information now on Garmin Basecamp, which is a free utility uh, that you can download from our website for either PC or Mac. Um, what you can see here is you can see this is a, a road going through here. Uh, here's a creek uh, that kind of goes along here, and some of these here are elevation lines, so you kind of get an idea of, of uh, your surroundings. Now the blue lines are all where, uh, they're, they're a track log basically, of where we walked. Um, I marked our stand, which is right there. Uh, last blood trail that we found uh, is right up there. So you can see there's a lot of concentration of blue right there. That's because that's where we, we uh, uh, did most of our searching, at least initially. Um, that is really, uh, it, it's very, very close. Um, as the crow flies, as the deer took it, they kind of took a circuitous route. So it was about almost two tenths of a mile um, in us tracking that blood. Um, you'll see over here, this is finally where the deer was recovered. Uh, that's nearly three tenths of a mile right there. Uh, so that deer traveled quite a ways from where we were looking, uh, where, from where it was ultimately recovered. Uh, but you can see here, we're kind of going along uh, creeks and, and channels and, and different elevations here to try to find that deer. And you can kind of see we're doing a concentric circle. Um, so that sort of thing gives you a little more of a method to tracking a deer. Instead of just walking around aimlessly, you can get a pretty good idea of where you've been and, and where you still need to recover, uh, look for, for a recovered deer. Uh, but as you can see, um, no amount of GPS will help you uh, locate that deer. It, it, it takes a lot of, of footwork too. Um, but basically, when we did find that deer, um, we were driving along uh, the road on the Viking and we stopped right here and we said, hey, you know what? There's some birds circling over here. Let's see, let's see what we can find. And this is us walking in here and, and finding that deer. So it'll at least give you a better idea of, of where to look. When we come back, we'll take a look at another first time bow hunter out at camp. The Yamaha Whitetail Diaries is brought to you in part by Bradley Smoker, food smoking made easy. Conquest Scents, hunting scents and dog training scents. Angle Coolers, a legend in reliability. Ingle's got the original high performance cooler and a whole lot more. Ingle coolers go with the original. I've never shot a multi killer pig like that. It's just awesome. First pig with the crossbow. I am pumped and excited. If you enjoy the outdoors, you're going to want to have a Bubba Blade by your side. Introducing the Bubba Blade Rhino, aka the stubby skinning knife. Well, on this pig today, the, I used the bubble blade stubby. I mean, that thing worked phenomenally. We've shortened up the handle to four inches and put a razor sharp four inch skinning blade on it to make the perfect skinning and gutting knife. You'll be able to work close in with ease. Like all bubble blades, the knife features our patented handle that gets sticky when wet, so it won't slip out of your hand while you're working. Combined with our razor sharp skinning blade, you have one kick ass knife. Go online at BubbaBlade.com to order your Bubba Blade today. Fast, affordable, and incredibly light. The all-new Shadow Ultralight from Tenpoint. The lightest and most compact crossbow on the market today. Tenpoint. There is no substitute. 
Mummies is the leader when it comes to wildlife management products in Texas. With four store locations around San Antonio and the ability to deliver feed all across the state, from bulk deer feed deliveries to feeders and blinds, they have all your wildlife management needs covered. They are the largest Purina Antler Max dealer in the nation, so deer nutrition is their specialty. Call today to discuss your nutritional program. Visit them on the web for more information. When it comes to wildlife needs, Mummies is the leader. Long range. It's a numerical game of precision. Start with a 30 millimeter tube. Add 480 clicks of adjustment. Plus instant zero reset. Minus your 503 yard target. Your answer, seven. Pro Staff 7, 30 millimeter rifle scope. The long range multiplier from Nikon. And with Nikon's no fault policy, you can subtract all doubt. NikonSportOptics.com. Welcome back to the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries with Wade Middleton. We're taking a sneak peek at Liz Dugan's hunt. Liz works for Cabela's and came out to deer camp to see if she could take a deer for the first time with her bull. So we invited her out. I mean, it was a no-brainer. Somebody's expressing an interest. They're wanting to learn more, and we, we had access during that time. We had a hole in our schedule to be able to allow her to come in. So it was like, hey, if you can come out, we'd love to have you. It's always fun to see you. Come out and go bow hunting. So Wade and Liz ventured out one afternoon to a little known spot called the Killing Tree. Yeah, so I was asking Wade if he has names for his spots, and he said he did. And so well, what is the name of this one? He said the Killing Tree. He's like, because that's exactly what it is. So I was, it was pretty promising based on that. The first group that came in, a lot of does and some smaller bucks. And then as it got darker and more into the evening, it, the bigger bucks came in to the point where there were probably two at one time that I probably could have taken, but none of them were in like great range. And there was one off in the distance that Wade had caught, and I had saw it a while back, but I didn't think it ever made it over, but it did. Good shot. <laughs> I think it's perfect in the heart. I think that's okay. perfect in the heart. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> so? I think that's perfect in the heart. <laughs> Woo, talk about heart. <laughs> I always like, can I jump out of my chest? <sighs> I'll tell you right now. Woo. I'm sitting over here. I didn't think he was coming back around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. You know, we, we came back, we ate, we watched the footage. Um, after seeing the footage, I thought, ah, it's not as perfect as I thought. It's back a little bit, maybe a little low. We ate, gave that deer a lot of time, rain's coming in, made the decision to go out and start tracking in the dark, you know, for it. And we're on our hands and knees, lights are digging around. You can see the track on the, on the GPS. We're working back and forth in there. And, the deer kind of goes down into this little bedding area that we basically never go in and then he come back up out of it and he's on the edge of a Sinisa flat and you can imagine the thoughts in the team's mind and I, I know what Liz is going through that there's nothing that I'm going to say that's going to be, you know, that's going to clear anything up. Hold right there, son. She can see it shining. Huh? Hmm? It's just not there. Right here. Will Liz and the crew recover her deer? Well, stay tuned next season and find out here on the Yamaha Whitetail Diaries. Oh, he's starting to bleed here. Okay. He's pouring now. Okay. All through there, Liz. Okay. Now I'm getting really nervous. 